Okay, two linear formulas that you need to know very well so you can manipulate linear functions are slope intercept y equals mx plus b where m is the slope that's the steepness that's the change and b is your y intercept okay x and y are just going to stay x and y but x and y really are uh, there's a bunch of dots if you've got a line there's tons of ordered pairs okay your second one is standard form and that's ax plus by equals c and this one is a little picky because a always 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 a must be positive the sign's got to be positive a that's the only one that they they worry about and then you can absolutely have no fractions. Okay, so now you're going to manipulate functions back and forth. So they give you these two functions. Both are given in slope intercept form. And they want you to convert them to standard form. So we've got to get uh, from this model to this model. So you got to get x and y all by itself. So right now, um, y is on the left, x is on the right, and I know I want my x's to be positive, so I'm going to move these guys over to the left. So I'm going to plus 12 fifths x on the right, I'm going to plus 12 fifths x on the left. So now I've got 12 fifths x plus a y is equal to 6. So that's positive, but the second rule has been broken. You can have no fractions. Okay, now I can uh, I can blow this up if I because it's an equation I can uh, manipulate it. So look at this. If you got 2x equals 4 because it's an equation that is the exact same equation if I double everything that's the same as 4x equals 8 or if I cut everything in half that's the same as x equals 2 these three equations are all the same so what you do to one side you do to the other and you don't even change the equation it stays true so I'm going to blow this one up I'm gonna multiply this entire equation by 5 I'm gonna multiply every term of the equation by 5. So I'm going to quintuple it. 6 quintupled is going to be 30. y times 5 is going to be 5y. But when I times this by 5, fractions, I'm really times it by 5 over 1. And that's five times your tops times your bottoms. 60 divided by 5. Or you can cross cancel your 5s. And that's just going to be 12x. So whatever the denominator is, I've got the 5 from the denominator. If the denominator was 10, you times it by 10. It's whatever the denominator is. Okay, now, this 12x plus 5y equals 30 is the exact same as 12 fifths x plus y equals 6. But they like it uh, standard form. They don't like any fractions. So this next one, um, because my x's are already positive, I'm moving the y's over here. So I'm going to minus y, minus y. And I'm going to move the negative one half to the left. I'm going to add one half to this side, and I'm going to add one half to this side. So on this side, I got one half, and on the other side, I got two thirds x minus y. And that's the same thing as if we flip flop it. 2 thirds x minus y equals 1 half. Okay, now that's positive, which is good, but rule number 2 has been broken. We cannot have any fractions. Now this time, I have two fractions. So, I need to blow this up. I need to times this by, you can't times it by 3. 3 will kill that fraction, but it will not kill this fraction. So you got to look at both of these together, 3 and 2, and you got to find that the LCM, the number that they both go into, which is 6. So you're going to multiply each of them by 6. And if you multiply everything by 6, it will uh, clean out all your fractions. So 2 thirds times 6, 6 on top and a 3 on bottom, that's the same thing as 6 divided by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 times 2x's two is 4x's. 
6 times a minus y is a minus 6y, and 6 times a half, the same 6 divided by 2, that's really 3. So there you go. That is your function converted into standard form. Oh, dang it. I forgot the next part. Okay, the next part, you got to find the x and the y intercepts. Okay, your x and y intercepts, if you ever think of intercepts, that's where your graph crosses the axis. The y axis, that's the y intercept, and the x axis, that's the x intercept. The x intercepts are zeros. You've got to think of the number zero. Because if this dot, this dot would look maybe like uh, zero up one. And this dot right here would be a negative 2 and 0. So wherever you have an intercept, there's always, always, always going to be a 0. So let's just look at this function right here. And you can maybe go back and do the first one on your own. But if you are given this function in standard form and you want to find the x and y intercept, um, we can kind of cheat because I already know the y intercept from slope intercept form. So this guy right here, I already know my y intercept has got to be a negative one half. Because your b, that's what the b is. That's your y intercept. So now all I've got to do is find the x intercept. So not much work. Now, if you're going to find the x, and we can prove that it's negative one half, we can find both really quick. Because here's what we're going to do. If you need to know what the x-intercept is, you don't know what the x is, but you do know the y's got to be zero, and vice versa. If you're looking for the y-intercept, you have no idea what it is, but you know that its mate must be zero. So you know half of it is going to be zero, so we just got to find the other half. So let's find this x. If I know that y is zero, I'm going to substitute zero in place of y. And this says a negative 6 times y, so negative 6 times 0 is 0. So 4x equals 3 divided by 4 divided by 4. My x-intercept has to be 3 fourths. And the y-intercept, we can find that real quick. Just put 0 in for x. 4 times 0 is 0. A negative 6 times y equals 3 divided by negative 6 divided by negative 6. 3 divided by negative 6 is indeed a negative 1 half. So your intercepts are pretty easy to find. You just got to remember that they are zeros. Okay, the slope, inter form, slope intercept form. So they want it to look like y equals mx plus b. Oh, man. Um an idiot because I have given you the function so I'm going to have to delete these and just give you the pictures alright that's good to know so here we go we'll delete them pretend they're not there okay they want y equals mx plus b now if you're looking at a picture and these and I'm going to actually change this we need to do one dotted line and one solid so let's make this guy a solid line pretend it was solid okay this one is going to be a little bit easier if you ever come across horizontal lines or vertical lines they're the easiest if you have a line with some steepness with some slope then it's going to have both your y and your x but this guy right here is just going through the y-axis. So the equation is just going to be y equals wherever it goes through. And it happens to go through at 1. But now you can't use an equals because it's shaded everything below. And your y equals 1 is a solid line. But the answer cannot be anywhere on this line. So the dotted line means your answers cannot touch the line, but they can touch everything below it. So you've got to swap that equals out for a less than. Y is anything less than 1. Okay, it's important to note this line right here has a slope of 0. There's 0 slope. If it's totally flat, there's 0 slope. 
Okay, now for fun, we're going to look at uh, vertical lines. So let's put one in here. Vertical line. If I draw a vertical line right through here, and let's say that it's solid, and I shade everything this way of it. Okay, and this one is just going through the x-axis, so it's going to be x equals 2. But now if I say it's an inequality, and it's everything to the right, the x-axis, as we go right, the numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. So x is anything greater than or equal to 2. And you must note that the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Okay, now let's look at this next one. So the next one, we changed it to a solid line. And we need two things. Y equals MX plus B. We need to know the Y-intercept, which is easy to find. It is right there. So the Y-intercept is a negative 3. And then you need to know the M, which is the slope. And to find the slope, you need another dot. So you've got to put dots anywhere well, I'm not sure if that I gotta do some erasing you gotta put dots on where they cross so here is a dot and where else do they cross uh, there's gotta be a dot right there and there has to be a dot right here this one's kinda hard to tell but they got to be the same. So let's look. If I go down and over and down and over, I went down three, then over five, down three and over five. So that's it. We put them in the right spot. So you're going down three and over five, down three and over five. So your slope is going to be rise over run. The rise is the up and down, so that's going to be three. The run is left and right. That's going to be 5. And as I go left to right, it's falling. So I know it's got to be a negative slope. And then we're going to change this equals. So here's what I got so far. I got y equals a negative 3 fifths x plus, or I guess, a minus 3. Okay, now we need to swap out this equals for an inequality. And if I pretend it's a solid line, so the answer can be anywhere on the line and it's anywhere above it. So y, the y-axis is this one going up and down. The more you go up, the bigger the numbers get. So it's everything above this line, which is getting into some big numbers. So y is anything greater than or equal to this line. Okay, now they're going to give you some information. you got to come up with your own function. So if you have a line right here, this line, let me just graph it real quick. X plus 4. So if I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, there's a dot. That's your y-intercept. Then up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. You're going to have a line, something like this. Okay, we need to write an equation in slope-intercept form for another line, not this one, because they gave us that one, but our line is going to be parallel to theirs. But ours goes through this dot, left 4, down 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 3. Our dot, our line goes through this dot, but it's got to be parallel, so it has to look like this. So it's going to be a little bit below it. But what you, the key word is parallel. And parallel lines have the exact same slope. So if we're going to write it in slope-intercept form, you need to identify two things. You need the slope and you need the y-intercept. Where it crosses, it crosses. That's not a very accurate picture, but it's got to cross the y-axis somewhere. Okay, parallel. They gave us the parallel because their slope, this line has a steepness that's just one. And if ours is parallel, ours has the same steepness. So our steepness will also be 1. The question is, where is it going to cross? So, let's use this dot that they gave us, because this is a big hint. So my model is y equals mx plus b. 
I can now substitute in place of m a 1 and what they've given me here is an x and a y that I can substitute. I'm going to substitute the x in there, the y in here. I've substituted everything but a b. But if you know everything but the b, you can figure it out. So y is going to be a negative 3. m is going to be 1 times x, which is a negative 4 plus b. So negative 3 equals a negative 4 plus b. So let's ditch let's ditch this negative four. Let's plus four. Plus four. B has got to be one. So slope is one, y intercept is one. So your answer is y equals one x plus one. And you don't really need to put the one in. Okay, now next one. Um, it's perpendicular. So look at this line right here. This line, if I were to graph it up three dot, and then slope is up one over five, so it's kind of a not very steep line, something like this. Okay, our line is going to go through this dot zero negative two. So our line goes through here, but our line is perpendicular so that means it's got to cross at a 90 wherever they meet they intersect at a 90 degree angle all right so here we go we need two things we need the slope and we need the y-intercept but I really only need the slope because they that dot they gave me is the y-intercept anytime you see a zero that's an intercept so this y-intercept is negative 2 so now I just got to find the slope and I know that parallel slopes are equal, but perpendicular slopes, their slope is one-fifth. So my slope is going to be negative 5. So my answer is going to be y equals negative 5, x minus 2. So I'm going to use the same numbers, perpendicular, use the same. You flip them upside down, theirs is 1 over 5, mine is going to be 5 over 1. And if theirs is positive, mine's negative. If theirs is negative, mine's positive. Okay, now they're going to give you some more information. They want the same thing. Slope intercept form. A line that goes through this dot. Uh, okay, so look, that's a nice dot. They gave me an easy dot. Because that dot is the y-intercept. It's the same dot we just barely did. Okay, and it's parallel to an equation of 3x plus 5y equals 3. Okay, this is in standard form which doesn't really help because I want I need to know the slope of this line because they're parallel so this line I've got to convert it first into slope intercept form because when it looks like y equals mx plus b that's the only time that you can find the steepness is when it's in slope intercept form so right now I've got to convert it to that form I'm gonna move these x's over I'm going to minus 3x's minus 3x's. So I've got 5y's equals a minus 3x's plus 3. Now I've got to divide this by 5, divide this by 5, divide this by 5. So my function is y equals a negative 3 fifths x plus 3 fifths. So my slope is right here. My slope is a negative 3 fifths. So if my line is parallel to their line, my slope must also be a negative 3 fifths. And the y-intercept they gave me for free, the y-intercept was a negative 2. But if they didn't, if this would have been a 1, something not 0, then you would have to do, you'd have to set it up, y equals mx plus b. And then start subbing in the numbers. You're going to swap out an M for negative 3 fifths. Y, you got to put a negative 2 there. M, a negative 3 fifths times X. Uh, what's my X? 0. And the calculator will do all your fractions, so don't freak out about fractions. And then you'd have to solve for B. Okay, these guys, they give you two dots. 
So with two dots, you gotta find M and you gotta find B. This is an X, this is a Y, this is an X, this is a Y. If they give me two X's and two Y's, one of them's X1, one of them's X2. Y sub 1, Y sub 2. So let's use the Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 divided by X sub 2 minus X sub 1. And it's going to be, if I do this one first, a negative 2 minus a negative 4. And then a negative 4 minus a negative 4 on top is going to be, that's a plus, that's a plus. Top is going to be 2, on bottom is going to be 0. And this should jump out at you. 2 divided by 0, that's impossible, that cannot be done. That's undefined. An undefined picture looks like this. Look at these dots, negative 4 down 2, if I go left 4 and down 2, and then if I go left 4 and down 4, these dots are going to go vertical. And the function, well it's not even a function, because it's undefined. You cannot have more than one dot on this x is negative 4, and I got a million dots, so it's just x equals a negative 4. Okay, the next one, let's do y minus y, so I'm going to do 5 take away 3, and on bottom a negative 2 take away a negative 3, so on top is 5 take away 3, and that's a plus, so it's just 1. So my m is 2. Now I just got to find my y-intercept. So I'm going to take the model, y equals mx plus b. I'm going to plug in 2 for my m, and I'm going to choose choose this dot right here. you got 2 to choose from. It doesn't matter which one, because they both are on the same line, so they'll both give you the same answer. I'm going to take this x and plug it in there. I'm going to take this y, plug it in there. So the y is now 5. The m is now 2. The x is a negative 2, and the b is still unknown. So 5 has got to equal a negative 4 plus b. So what number minus 4 is 5? I know b has got to be 9. Plus 4 plus 4. b has to be 9. So if my slope is 2 and it goes through the y-axis at 9, my function is y equals 2x plus 9. Okay, some transformations. So sliding left, right, up, down. Um, this is an absolute value function. The absolute value, and we need to find the vertex because these are all in vertex form. So the vertex is right here. The vertex, we go left 2 and down 3. That dot right there is my vertex. So which one of these tells you to go left 2 and down 3? They're all telling you to go down 3 because that's the last thing you do. That's the very uh, that's the very last shift, so that's the one on the very end. Now this one, the one that's uh, inside left 2, this, one of these is going to tell you to go left 2. And it is one of these two bottom ones. So we got to narrow down to right here, here. Because if it's plus 2, they want us to go left 2. If it's minus 2, they want us to go right 2. So you start here at 0, 0. If they say plus something, you're going left. And then at the end, if it's minus, you're going down. So the vertex form is... Uh, x minus h, oh, absolute plus k. So if you got something out here, that's kind of the slope, that's the steepness. It can make it steeper or less steep. And then this and this, the h goes left and right. And when it's a minus h, that's going right. Plus h goes left. k goes up and down. Plus is up, minus is down. Now, it's shaded everything below 
this graph and the y-axis because these are the same things as y so the y's are anything below so the numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller so it's y is less than your answer is anything less than or anything underneath less than is underneath greater than is above so if it's less than this line it's got to be that okay this one the graph shows g of x which is a translation of f of x f of x is just absolute value of x which is just right here steepness of one but now it shifted uh, so we just copied and pasted it 10 units down so 10 units down has got to be B so they didn't do anything inside the bars they just went negative 10 at the very end so that copies and pastes it 10 units down these ones okay they give you a function but they want you to create a new function so G so you gotta look at F and you've gotta take F and you need to move it three up and six left. Okay, three up. So check this out. I'm gonna just kind of draw a rough sketch. Start at zero zero. Plus two tells me to go left two and down one. And because it's absolute, I know it looks something like that. So if I want this three units up. Right now I'm at negative 1, so I gotta go up to 0, then to 1, then to 2. So what I'm gonna do is just plus 3, and that gives me 2. So I know it's gonna be absolute value of x something plus 2. Okay, now 6 units left. I already went uh, 2 units left, so I wanna keep going left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 more beyond that is gonna be. 8. Okay, now let's look at this one. We want to go, we want to take this and we want to move it 4 units down and 5 units right. So let's maybe do just a sketch real quick. Look, this uh, it's going to be harder if I tell you to go 5 units left. So let's do that. Let's change it to left. Alright, here we go. So this original is a negative it's a minus two so i'm going to go two to the right and then a plus three so i'm going to go up three there's my vertex it's absolute with a slope of one so it's going to look like that now they want it four units down so we got to take this vertex and move it down four so just count down four or we're going to subtract four and that's going to be a negative one so if we take this one two three four down is going to leave me at negative 1 and then 5 units left ok 5 units left is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so if I'm over here at, at 2 and we go 5 units to the left it's going to take me it's kind of 2 minus 5 which should end me up clear over here at negative 3 but now here's why it's tricky, here's why it's harder. So I want to be over here at negative 3 and I want to be down 1. So this function, and I'm going to call it g, g of x. So you got to tell me to go 3 to the left, which is actually x plus 3. And then you got to tell me to go down 1, which is minus 1. So that's kind of tricky. Okay, the rule for a function, a function can never have two dots on one x. So a is no good because look, the x is 8 and the y is 5, but then the x is 8 and the y is 6. That's impossible. 8 has to have only one answer every time you plug it in and it's got to give you the same answer. So a is no good. B is no good because the vertical line test. This 3 is giving me an answer of 3, and then 3 gives me an answer of a negative 3, and then 3 gives me an answer of a negative 5. So if I go over, well, it's not 3, I guess it's actually 2. 
If I go over 2 and up 3, but then over 2 and down 3, and then over 2 and down 5, if you draw a vertical line and it goes through more than one dot, that's describing something impossible. C is it, because D, 5 gives you a dot on 14, and then 5 gives you a dot on 19. You cannot have two different dots on the number 5. So C is good. Because a vertical line through all these dots only touches once. Okay, evaluate a function. Substitute a negative 4 in place of P. So you must first do exponents. That's your very, very first move. So copy the equation. In place of the X, put parentheses. And then take the x out and sub in a negative 4. So you have to do the exponents first. Negative 4 squared, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. So it's really 2 times 16 plus 3. 2 times 16 is 32 plus 3. That should give you a 35. So what that means is this dot, negative 4, 35. If you go left 4, there should be a dot clear up at 35. Okay, now you're going to have to substitute in an algebraic expression. So x plus 1, that whole expression goes in for x. So x, take it out, put parentheses there. Whatever you sub in, you got to square it. Plus 2. So I'm plugging in x plus 1. And to square x plus 1, you've got to do x plus 1 times itself, x plus 1 times x plus 1, which is going to be x squared plus x plus x plus 1, which is x squared plus 2x's plus 1. And then at the end, i got a plus 2. So I'm going to add the 2 to the 1, and my final answer will be x squared plus 2x plus 3. Okay, now this is where we've been lately, playing around with polynomials. Classify them by degree and number of terms. This guy right here has three terms, so it's a trinomial. Um, the degree is exponent, it's a quadratic. But we need to put them in standard form. So standard form, you're going to put the 4x squared first, then the negative 3x, then the plus 2. And my lead coefficient is 4. This one is a monomial. The degree, this happens to be a polynomial with two variables. We don't really play with those too much. But if you've got two different variables, the degree is actually going to be the sum of both of them. So the degree is going to be 9. Um, it is in order, so the lead coefficient would be 2. This one is just four terms. So there's no special name for four terms. One term is monomial, two terms is binomial, three terms is tri, so this is just four terms, no name. The degree is quartic. It's fourth degree, and then standard form is going to be negative 4x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, and my lead coefficient is going to be just a negative 4. Okay, this last one is actually 4 times x to the 0. It's degree 0. So we call that a constant. And it is a monomial. So it's in order, so the lead coefficient would be 4. Okay, now long division. Um, one of these you can use the shortcut. You can use the shortcut any time that it the coefficient is 1. So multiplying something by a power of negative 1 is the same thing as dividing. So if you have a negative exponent, you got to take this to the bottom. So this trinomial is a little bit tricky because they're skipping a degree. So they've got a cubic and then they've got the quadratic but they're skipping the linear. So in its place, I'm just going to put 0x's. 
plus 5, and they're going to divide that by 8x plus 9. Okay, now I'm going to kind of ignore this 9, and I'm just focusing right here on the 8x. And I'm going to focus right here on this 8x cubed. 8x times what is going to give you 8x cubed? And it is just 1x squared. So if I multiply 1x squared now by my 8x, you have created an 8x cubed. And if you multiply 1x squared, you got to times it, distribute it to both. So you got to times it to the 9. And that's going to give you 9x squared. Okay, now your next move, you got to subtract. So change the sign, change the sign. 8x cubed minus 8x cubed, that's nothing. That's 0. But then this guy right here is also 0. And bring down 0. Bring down, I think we're done. This is it. That's got to be my remainder, because 8x's times what will give you 5 nothing. So my answer is going to be x squared plus your remainder of 5 over 8x plus 9. So that one was maybe too easy. Okay, let's use synthetic division. Synthetic division, they kind of have this little template. We need to plug stuff in. Okay, the what we're going to plug, we're looking here to plug in, and we're going to plug in the opposite of whatever it is. Since that's a negative 8, we're plugging in a positive 8. Okay, now this does the same thing. I'm going to put my 5, but then I'm going to put my negative 40, but you must put 0 here. You'll get it wrong because it's this is a cubic, this is a quadratic. There's no linears, so put in a 0. And then a minus 1. Okay, and this last, whatever series is going to be my remainder. So move number 1, bring the 5 down. 8 times 5 is 40. Oh my gosh, this one's lame too. Add these up. Negative 40, 40, that's nothing, so that's 0. 8 times 0 is 0. 0 and 0 is 0. So... 8 times 0 again is 0, and a negative, so just bring this down. So my answer is going to be 5, and, and because this was a cubic, my answer is actually going to be uh, 1 degree less. It's going to be a quadratic. So 5n squared minus 1 over n minus 8. Factoring. Okay, the easy ones are going to be this guy. Let's do the easy ones first. If it ever starts with a 1, that's not too bad. So what you're looking for is going to be n and n. It's got to multiply and give you negative 28. But it's got to add and give you 3. So the options for 28 are, we're going to use 7 and 4. 7 times 4 gives you 28, but it needs to be a negative 28. So one of them has got to be negative. You're going to go with the negative 4. Because when you add them, they give you 3. So that's going to be plus 7 and minus 4. Okay, the other easy one is going to be this guy right here. What times is it gives you 48, but adds and gives you a negative 14? But it times this and gives you a plus. I know it's got to be p minus something and p minus something. Because a negative times a negative is positive. 48. You go through your options of 48, 1 of 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, uh, 6 and 8. And that's going to be 6 and 8, because 6 and 8 is going to give you 14. So a minus 6 and a minus 8 times this gives you positive 48. Negative 6, negative 8 gives you negative 14. Then, this guy's going to be pretty easy too. Let's try for the GCF. If it's a binomial, let's see if we can factor out a GCF. So I'm going to divide both these guys by 4x. Divide that by 4x, so it's going to be 4x times x minus 2.
now for the more difficult ones let's do this this one with four terms jumps out at me because I know if there's four terms I can use grouping and we can group we can kind of just group them as they are we can group the first two together so 40 and 48 I'm gonna divide each of these by 8v squared I'm gonna divide this by 8v squared so that will leave me with 8v squared times 40 divided by 8 is going to be 5. v cubed divided by v squared is just a v. 48 divided by 8 is going to be 6. And v squared divided by v squared is just 1. And 6 times 1 is just 6. Okay, now the next two, I'm going to divide them both by I'm gonna kinda cheat because I know this group I know it needs to end up I want it to look like 5v plus 6 so I'm gonna divide 80 by 5 80 divided by 5 is 16 so that leads me to believe that I'm gonna divide each of these by 16 so let me check on my calculator. 96 divided by 16 and make sure that is a 6. It is. Okay. So I'm going to divide them both by 16, but if I divide them by 16, I'm in trouble. Because a negative 80 divided by 16 is a negative 5. And a negative 96 divided by 16 is a negative 6. But I need a positive 5 and a positive 6, so I must divide by a negative 16. Because a negative divided by negative is positive, and a negative divided by negative is positive. And i got to have them both be positive. So, there we are. Now, I'm going to factor out of this group a 5v plus 6. I'm going to factor out of this group a 5v plus 6. My answer in one group is 5v plus 6. In my other group is what's left over. It's going to be 8v squared minus 16. But you're not done, because this group has a common factor. I need to factor a 2 out of each of these, so my final answer is going to be 5v plus 6. And then my other group, if I factor out a 2, it's going to leave me with 4v squared minus... No, i got to factor out more than... Is that 8 and a 16? More than 2. I've got to factor out as much as I can. i got to factor out an 8... I want to divide both these guys by 8, so it's going to be v squared minus 2. On the outside, you should have an 8. Now, that leaves us with the hard, hard ones. Um, This guy. Okay, let's rewrite it. I want it to look like this guy. So I'm going to go 9x squared. I'm going to change this trinomial into a polynomial with four terms. And I know that my cool phenomena, I know that the first times the last will equal the middle times the middle. So I'm going to calculate 9 times negative 24 is equal to a negative 216. So I know that these two have got to times and give you a negative 216. So that's my number. But they've got to add and give you 19. So 216, I don't know, that's a crazy number. Two, I have no idea what the factors are. So I just get my calculator. It's 1 and 216. Start dividing by numbers. Divide by 2, divide by 3, try 4, try 5. So I'm going to divide by 2. That's 108. Okay, 3 will go into it. 216 divided by 3. 3 and 72. 4 will. 216 divided by 4. 4 and 54. 5 will not. 6 maybe. 6 and 36. Don't know about 7. 7 does not. 216 divided by 8. 8 and 27 okay and I think it's going to be these two eight and I think we can get a 19 out of 8 and 27 because it's got a times give you negative 216 so one of these got to be negative one of them got to be positive alright 
believe that 8's got to be negative. So if we do 27 times a negative 8, we get a negative 216. But if we do 27 minus 8, we get 19. So we can put the minus 8 here and the 27 here. Or vice versa, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I want, look, I did that, so it would be plus negative, plus negative. Okay, now, we're going to group them. So this group right here, we got to put with this negative 8, they're really negative 8 x's, and these are 27 x's, because they got a total and give you 19 x's. So out of this group, I'm going to factor an x. Divide this by x, divide this by x. So it's x times x minus 8. And out of this group, which is 27x minus 24, I'm going to factor out. What are we going to factor out? A 3. Dang it, something's not looking right. If we factor out a 3, that leaves me with 3 times 9x minus 8. And, oh, I'm, gosh dang it. I know why it's not looking right. Because this guy right here is 9x squared, not 1x squared. Okay, I knew it wasn't looking right because these always got to be the exact same thing. And I got x minus 8, but over here I got 9x minus 8, so something's messed up. So, I went back and looked, and it is 9x squared, not 1x squared. So here we go. I found my mistake, so now it's going to be much more pleasing. So check this out. If you've got 9x squared minus 8x... There's nothing in common with the 9 and the 8, but we're going to still factor out an x. So it's going to be x times 9x minus 8. Okay, now I'm happy because there's my 9x minus 8. There's my 9x minus 8. So my answer is going to be a 9x minus 8 in one group, and in the other group is going to be an x plus a 3. And you're done because these guys got nothing in common, and these guys got nothing in common. So that is it. Okay, that's a lot of work. Those ones are kind of uh, tough. This one, the same thing. You're going to break this up. You're going to break this into 10m squared plus a blank plus a blank minus a 30. Now I'm going to rewrite this as a polynomial with four terms so I can do some grouping. So times your first and your last, 10 times a negative 30. My number is a negative 300. But it's got to add and give you negative 13. So it's like this. Negative 300 on top, negative 13 on bottom. Times this gives you negative 300, adds and gives you negative 13. So 300, start making a list. 1 and 300, 2 and 150. 3 and 100, 4 and 60, no, 4 and 75, 4 and 75, 5 and 60, 6 is going to go into 56, 300 by, yes, 6 and 50. 7, let's try 7, 300 divided by 7, no, 300 divided by 8, no, 300 divided by 9, no, 300 divided by, oh, 10, 10 and 30, is that right, okay, I don't think I can make a 13 out of 10 and 30, so I gotta keep going, 300 divided by 12, there we go, 12 and 25, okay, we can make a 13 out of that, so it's got a times and give you a negative 300, 
So one of them's got to be negative, one of them's got to be positive. They add and give you negative 13, so I got more negatives than positives, so that means the negative's got to be with the 25, and the 12's got to be positive. So negative 25 and a positive 12. Okay, I'm going to put them... I'm going to put the negative here. So negative 25m and 12m. Okay. Now let's group them. So if I group the first two, what's common to 10m squared and 25? I'm going to divide them both by 5m. Divide that by 5m. So it's going to be 5m times 2m minus 5. My next group, 12 and 30, divide them both by 6. So that's going to be 6 times 2m minus 5. There we go. They matched up, so we did it right. 2m minus 5 in one group. 5m plus 6 in the other group. They got nothing in common. They're both prime, so that is it. Okay, polynomial functions. So if their arrows both go up, that's got to be an even function. If one goes up, one goes down, that's an odd function. You got to drop them a match. What do we got to choose from? I don't, you can't even hardly see anything. These two are cubic and these two are quadratic. So this negative flips it upside down. So this one's got to match with this guy. This one's got to match with this guy. And then this negative, so it's got to have negative slope, which is this one. But it's going to cross at 7. Oh, that's somewhere right there. This is x cubed. This doesn't, this doesn't have one, so it crosses at 0. So it's got to be that guy. Okay, then if you have this function which is linear and they want you to vertically stretch it by a factor of 3 so first let's get it into our model y equals mx plus b because that's my slope and they want slope so I'm gonna go 2y equals 6x plus 10 divide by 2 divide that by 2 divide that by 2 it should be y equals 3x plus 5 okay so the slope is 3 but if you're going to vertically stretch it, that means you're going to make it steeper by a factor of 3. You're going to take the original and you're going to multiply it by a factor of 3. So your new slope is going to be 9. Compress it means you're going to shrink it. So if you're going to compress it by a factor of 1 third, 3 times a third, or 3 divided by 3, your slope, your new slope would just be 1.